The top dozen things every RVer should have and know. First of all, what makes us experts or at least qualified to talk about this? Well, we've been full-time RVers for six years now and weekend warriors for probably a couple of years before that. But what really makes someone an expert? Well, certainly not by knowing everything when they started out. I would argue that we've become experts by knowing nothing and learning by making every mistake you could possibly imagine. Yeah, that's us. I know nothing. nothing. Now we've traveled through 26 states and over 48,000 miles and have learned a ton. We're learning every day. So today we'd like to help some of our fellow newbies on the channel. That is with the help of this wonderful community and with a short list of a dozen or so things that every RVer should have and or know to make their first trip successful. I'm hoping that you folks will help by filling in the blanks. Yeah, we'll do some of the less obvious ones and you guys can bring up some of the absolute needs as well. Okay, let's jump right in. Hey guys, don't let me down. Include your list and your suggestions in the comments below. Number one, stay within your budget. Remember, smaller can many times make the experience better. Oh, look at you, a little tiny toilet for a little tiny baby. To ah! Says the guy with a 42 foot rig. Many national and state parks have rig size limitations. And if you have something the size of our 42 foot grand design, 390RK, you'll probably have to park further out and drive into the park, like we did when visiting Yellowstone, 60 miles outside the gate. Another drawback to our gigantic rig is that boondocking is limited. Because of our ground clearance, we're kind of low slung, making undulant terrain a no-go boondocking more can mean saving more bucks. Also consider seasonal, monthly, and weekly rates at some parks, because that could be quite a bit cheaper. Maybe a subscription like Thousand Trails might suit your needs. Number two, protect your investment. In case you haven't heard, sometimes RV parks have issues with their power like low voltage, ground faults, shorts, and many others. Yeah, not that. Your RV is a massive investment. For a lot of us, it's our home. So how about protecting that investment? Invest in a surge protector. Many of the newer RVs have them hardwire into your system. But if you don't have one, yes, they can be a bit pricey. But that is a small price to pay for a device which could save you thousands on protection for your electrical system and expensive appliances. Our rig did come with one hardwired in, which we do suggest. You might want to take a look at, say, this one. Number three. How about, have you ever heard the term degloved finger? It's sometimes called ring avulsion. It's a medical term coined by ER physicians for a devastating accident that happens with anyone who works around heavy machinery, like RVs, and gets their beautiful gold, platinum, silver, and diamond encrusted rings caught in the machinery. In an instant, that ring can scalp the skin off your finger. Clean off. Clean off. Just ask Jimmy Fallon. We've had that problem with firefighters back in the day when we'd ride tailboard on the apparatus and accidentally hooked the edge of the ring on a tarp snap. Yeah, it's pretty nasty. Ours and many other RVer solutions are these silicone rings which stretch and break rather than deglove your finger. We don't worry about losing our precious rings. You can find the silicone ones quite cheaply considering. We'll leave a link below. Number four. 
elbows. To be more precise, the clear elbows that attach to the sewer hose. We use it to check the status of our black waste tank when we're flushing that tank. It makes it easier to see if the water is clear so we know we've done our job properly or if we need to keep flushing. Easy to use, it attaches to the end of the sewer pipe hose. Some come pre-attached to the hose. I think that they're around 16 bucks. We'll leave a link. Number five. Brass adjustable pressure regulator. That goes without saying, save your plumbing in that nice rig of yours. We've literally been to some parks where the pressure was so high, they had a warning on their list of rules in bold red letters, must use a pressure regulator. And they asked us at check-in if we had one. Save your pipes. Uh, no, just to prop, I, cancer, I don't smoke. Number six. TPMS. This is something that can make your whole life a whole lot easier. That's tire pressure monitoring system. When you have one on each tire wheel combination, it's just a glance to check the status of your tires cold and gives you the ability to monitor your trends when you have one on each tire wheel combination that includes your spares, the one for the RV and the one for your truck. It is just a glance to check the status of your tires cold and gives you the ability to monitor trends in pressure and temperature, giving you a chance to have them inspected if you find a problem before it causes a lot of damage to your rig. Number seven. Back up. We use our cell phones most of the time for communications when one of us is backing and the other's guiding because it is true two-way communications. But there have been times where there is no cell coverage and then we switch to our alternates, our ham walkie-talkies. So for those of you without a ham license, there are some fairly good short-range GMRS radios by Motorola and several other manufacturers that will work just fine. Always have a backup. Number eight. Some of the newer rigs are coming without ladders. Federal regulations regarding greater reinforcement to those rear-mounted ladders. I guess some companies just think that that is a little too onerous. Some are actually providing you with a collapsible one in one of your bays. Being a retired firefighter, I find that I like having a secondary exit off that roof. We found one that meets the bill, the right weight, good weight carrying specs, it's collapsible, to store easily, and bumpers to protect my fingers when lowering it. Number nine. Water softener. We have a pure aqua. We also think that they are all pretty much the same, but ours came with some extra gadgets that we ordered with it. We can go about three weeks before we have to regenerate the system with two boxes of table salt, depending on how much water we use. It protects our plumbing from hard water damage and it softens the water to where we don't need nearly as much laundry or dish soap. It also makes your skin silky soft and therefore you're not nearly as itchy in areas with hard water, like anywhere in Arizona. Number 10. A National Park Pass. If you're actively RVing, you can buy this and give yourselves the gift of memories. If you're over 65, it's called a Senior Pass and it's good for a lifetime. And get free access to all national parks. Just a side note, each state generally has their own version of this pass. Here's another good reason. We, not that very long ago, stayed at Antelope Marina RV Park, which just happens to be in the Glen Canyon National Recreational Area land by about 300 yards. So if you've got a site there, unless you want to pay an entry fee every time you go back to your RV, you'll need this pass to avoid additional fees to get back to your camper. And yes, the park is beautiful and definitely worth a visit. Number. 11. Know where you can go. 
If you bought a larger and taller rig, you might consider getting an RV Safe GPS. We use a Garmin and update its maps often for free through Garmin's app. There is nothing like knowing that if you input the correct information, your width, length, height, weight, etc., that you can, in most cases, have the confidence that you won't end up shearing your RV's ACs off, get stuck in a dead-end street that you have to back out of, or be looking at a bridge that's not rated to carry your rig. A lot will even warn you that the road is too narrow and you can't safely stay in your lanes around turns. A couple of years ago, we stayed at Lake Simtustus in Oregon near Madras. Stunning! Google wanted us to go one way and the Garmin insisted the other. Had we followed Google, we would have found ourselves at a turn we couldn't make and a bridge we couldn't cross, having to back out along a four-mile canyon wall on a narrow road. Take a look at this on the map. Yeah, it's great peace of mind having an RV safe GPS. Number 12. Get an extra or two. That's fire extinguishers for your rig and a couple for your truck or towed. The one that comes with your rig is way too small. As a retired firefighter, I would recommend something like a 2A 10BC. Now remember, get out first. And after you're safe and have called 911, if you can safely, think about discharging your extinguisher at the base of the flames. Be cognizant of the ambient wind because the powder in these things is very fine and can affect your breathing and it gets everywhere. We used to teach our recruits that if you're not wearing SCBA, that's self-contained breathing apparatus, take a breath first and hold it, that's your breath, while discharging and then stay in the fresh air and never go back in till fire says it's okay. Well folks, what are your ideas for our newbies as they get started on this wonderful life of RVing? Part or full time, doesn't matter. What does is that we're all making some amazing memories. Chime in below and show just how great an RVing community can be. Thank you all for riding along again. Please travel safe.